fight my struggle, my pain. Give it all, we're running my game. I want it all now, money and fame. Then never coming back like a runner. Malachi Corley, Allen, Isaiah Davis, Travis, over the middle, touchdown. Get it up, get him up, get to my right. Intercepted, Quantes Sticker. Visualize the prize in my eyesight. Then I'm all good gravy, I like. Jalen Key with the pick for Alabama. Give it all, we're running my game. I want it all now, money and fame. Then never coming back like a runaway train. So, gotta keep on moving. No, no sleep, no snoozing. I got a shot for what's mine in a time when the grind don't stop, then my team's not losing. Get it up, get him up, get your mind right. Gotta get what is mine in the limelight. Visualize the prize in my eyesight. Then I'm all good gravy, I like. My fight, my struggle, my pain. Give it all, we're running my game. I want it all now, money and fame, then never come back. Train. Congratulations, man. Appreciate Welcome you, man. to Jets. <laughs> Welcome into Jets Overtime. Our draft recap is presented by Duncan. Eric Allen and Brian Baldinger here at One Jets Drive. The rookies are out here this weekend for camp, but last weekend the Jets drafted seven players whose dreams came true. Yeah, they did. And, you know, this is not a one day thing. This has been years and years of building to the point where you're eligible to be drafted, a team selects you. You have the moment to really enjoy it. Now it's time to get to work and to really work at making that come true. And then not just make it come true, EA, but they're looking for longevity. You got to think like, can I, can I make this thing a career right now? The headliner of the class, Olu Fashnu out of Penn State. Another big piece for an offensive line where Joe Douglas has done a lot of work up front this offseason. Well, it's a great insurance policy, at least to start with right now. But he has all of the makings of being an elite cornerstone left tackle, protecting the blind side of whoever's at quarterback for a long, long time. This is what they look like. They look like they're 6'6 with long arms and good feet. And you get a chance over, you know, 23 starts at Penn State to see that this guy has the makings of what you need at that position. And he always looked up to Tyron Smith. You made a comparison to him coming out in your draft preview. You know, it was really his style of play, EA. When I, when I watched Tyron Smith play coming out of USC and then the great career he had with the Dallas Cowboys, he's a guy that once he got his grips on you, he never let it go. It was his style. And when I was studying Olu, I kept coming back to that. Like, once he gets his hands in you, and he digs him, like, he does not let you go. I love the pairing. What did you think about the offensive emphasis in the draft, the first five players for the Jets' offensive side of the ball? Well, I mean, look, you, you have identified that Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback. He is an elite player, obviously, for 20 years now. All you want to do is give him as much help as possible. You give him as much as he possibly can have to make him as successful as possible. And you're looking at the defensive side of the ball. They're going to benefit from all these offensive additions. Well, it's hard to win games if you're not scoring points. And the Jets didn't score points last year. I can just imagine what MetLife Stadium is going to feel like, sound like, if you give this defensive front a lead where they can just pin their ears back and get after the other quarterback, it's going to be a lot of fun. The Jets got some big time playmakers and they got some big time nasty dudes up front. It's going to be exciting to see what happens on the offensive side of the ball. Coming up, Caroline Hendershot and LeJay Doosable will discuss some of the newest Jets. This Jets Overtime NFL Draft Special is presented by Duncan. The Jets run on Duncan. Hey, Olu. Hey, what's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? We got you. Uh you're a New York Jet. We've been waiting a long you. time tonight for you. I'm so happy for you, brother. I'm so happy. Appreciate you. We're so excited Appreciate you. Yeah, man. I can't wait. Yeah, man. I cannot wait. Make sure, make sure you get everybody a big hug. Man. We'll do. I right. will. I will. Right. I got you. All right. Can't wait to see you. Okay. Here's All Coach right. Saul. Okay. Olu. What's going on, Coach? What? What's up, man? Congratulations, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I can't wait to get to work. No, no, you and me both, man. We're, we're excited to get you. We've had, we've had you uh, in our crosshairs the entire time, man. We're excited to get you. We're excited to get you up here. Um, you're going to be a hell of a player for a very long time. And uh, excited, man, I can't tell you enough, man. We're excited to get you. New York Jets. Yeah!
what a moment for Olu Fashionu and his family. So exciting to see them all hyped up in the background of his draft phone call. But I'm here with Leger Duzeville now. Leger, the Jets drafted seven rookies this past weekend, and I want your insight on some of them. First, starting with Olu Fashnu, there were some other available options at tackle. Why do you think Olu was the right choice that Joe Douglas went with? Caroline, I think this was a home run pick for the New York Jets. And I know people will look at me and say, but this is a win now team and you have two starting tackles already. But if you look at those two tackles, you look at Tyron Smith, who has had trouble staying healthy for the complete season over the last four years. And then you look at Morgan Moses, who's coming off a torn peck and is in his mid thirties, right? Olu Fashnu can come in and learn behind these guys. And there's a good chance, Caroline, he starts this year because when I look at Olu Fashnu, he reminds me, Caroline, of a guy that anchored that left side for the New York Jets for many years in the Brickershaw Ferguson, right? Same type of footwork, can get after you in the run game, high upside, extremely long arms to keep defenders at bay. I think this was a home run pick by the Jets. I've heard that comp a lot with DeBrickishaw Ferguson, and let me tell you, that's a great comp to have. People were maybe a little upset that the Jets didn't get a playmaker in, with that first pick, but then in the third round, they picked up Malachi Corley. He's known as the Yak King. What do you think he brings to this wide receiver room that maybe wasn't there before? He brings the attitude and grittiness that wasn't in that receiver room. He's a guy that you just got to get the ball in his hands, Caroline, because trust me, Defensive backs have to make business decisions when it comes to Malachi Corley. He's not a guy that's going to be shifty in the open field. He's dropping the shoulder on you. So you hear Robert Sala always talk about all gas, no brakes. That is what Malachi Corley is. He's going to fit perfectly in that room because he brings a skill set that is not currently in that receiver room right now. Yeah, he's going to join Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams, and he's going to add a completely another dimension is what Joe Douglas was saying. So that's really exciting. And I think lastly, people are saying this might be the steal of the draft because of his injury. I know you were interested in quarterback Michael Pratt, but the Jets went with quarterback Jordan Travis. Why do you think they went with Jordan Travis? When you look at the quarterback position in this draft, besides Jaden Daniels, I don't know if there was a bigger ascension at quarterback play than Jordan Travis. He was the best player in the ACC. And that says a lot because Drake May went three overall and he played in the ACC. Very dynamic with his legs. And he's a touch thrower as well. Now, doesn't have the biggest arm, but I think it's the playmaking ability and the off script is why the Jets were intrigued. And he's coming off a, a, a ugly knee injury. And you would think this year, Caroline, more of a sit, wait, watch and learn behind two consummate pros and Tyrod Taylor and Aaron Rodgers. And then next year, maybe potentially get him on the field. But this is a good situation for Jordan Travis. I think every year, Caroline, a team should take a flyer on a quarterback just because, again, you can use him as a trading chip down the road or he could develop and turn into your starter. It's a win-win for your program. Yep, emulating that quarterback factory or the quarterback farm that Green Bay Packers have. Awesome insight, Leger. Thanks so much for that. We'll see you later. Coming up, Ethan Greenberg is talking to Dane Brugler about the Jets' day three picks and what they're adding to the team. This is John Stiegel with the Jets. Where did I tell you the place to be was? The Jets. New, New York. Yes, sir. You excited? Yes, sir. All right. We're excited to have you, man. Here's, yeah, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, won't make a mistake, man. Appreciate it. All right, man. Here's our D coordinator. All right. Yes, sir. Montez, what's happening, man? Man, just just chilling, man. Excited, man. Really, really enjoyed this process, man. I'm gonna get a Super Bowl. You fired up? Yes, sir, man. I'm man, about to cry, I'm shaking. You should, man. Right. So, you deserve this moment, pit, man. Right here. So well deserved. Yo, Stinks. What up? What up, Coach? Bobby M here. You remember me? Yes, sir. I do. Yeah. They always save the best for last, so you know they got me on the phone with you now. Hey, man. Yeah, they always say the best for last. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like Rick said, man, you really impress a lot of people here. As a matter of fact, I'm getting emotional now. Uh, listening yes, to you and having you in my office for those 15 minutes was incredible. Uh, and we're looking for you to do some good things for us here and join the team, you know? Defense is unbelievable. Yes, sir. Ferocious. We expect you to come in and uh, do a great job, brother. Yes, sir, man. That's the plan. I, I, I appreciate y'all for giving me this opportunity to further my career, man. Yeah, I promise y'all won't regret it. Nah, we ain't going to regret it brother. We're, good, we're, we're really happy about this. You come see me when you get here, all right? Yes, sir. Good luck, brother. Thanks. Take care. Bye.
Quantes Stiggers, the first player in NFL history to be drafted from the CFL. For more on these day three prospects, let's bring in the Athletics' Dane Brugler, and let's start with Stiggers, because I'm curious, one, when did he get put on your radar, and two, how different is the tape from the CFL compared to college football? Yeah, and I give credit to Eric Galco, uh, the East-West Shrine Bowl um, uh, uh, director, who uh, gave me a heads up about Stiggers. Galco, they kind of said, hey, this is a guy that uh, you know if we're thinking about inviting to the Shrine Bowl. Uh, a lot of uh, attention from NFL teams, and so it's such a unique situation. And then when I watched him, I was like, okay, I can understand why there's interest here. Six foot, two hundred five, still a young player. I mean, he just turned twenty-two years old. So this isn't a case of you know bounced around for a while and is finally getting a shot. I mean, he's still young, uh, younger than some other players in this class. At the end of the day, you're grading the traits. You're grading, okay, what is this guy? How does he move? Uh, how does he react? And all that stuff, you know, the ball skills. How does he play the ball? He did it at a high level. And, and so there's a lot of things about that tape that you watch at the CFL that you say, okay, this is going to tra translate pretty well to the pro game. Dane, let's go to the top of day three for the Jets. Round four, the Jets select Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. Then later in the draft, they double down at running back. They take Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. So between these two players, do you think that they're similar in the way that they play the game? They're both uh, bigger backs, right? Uh, Braylon Allen, 6'1", 235 pounds. Um, he just he looks the part. He actually went to Wisconsin as a linebacker. The youngest player in this draft uh, just turned 20 years old. Drafting these two guys, you want to establish uh, a, a ground and pound type of run game. You know, you want to really uh, set the tone with guys like this that are physical. They run tough. Um, they have the body types to hold up physically. Both these guys really productive when they're on the field and guys that you project having pretty early roles in this offense. Dane, of course, the Jets had Mr. Irrelevant. They used that pick on Alabama's Jalen Key. What do you like about him? Just well-rounded, you know. Like I don't think he has necessarily an A plus trait anywhere, but he's pretty solid across the board. And, you know, like speed is good, not great. Size is good, not great. Um, you know, the way he plays, uh, the ball reactions, good, not great. But I mean, he doesn't make a ton of mental mistakes. Couldn't think of a better person to wrap up day three of the NFL draft with Dane Brugler. As always, appreciate the time. Anytime, thanks, Ethan. Be at MetLife Stadium next season to experience the action and energy of Jets game day. Lock in your 2024 season tickets to see the biggest matchups of the year. Learn more at nyjets.com slash season tickets. Coming up next, we're going inside the film room with Brian Baldinger. All right. You ready to get the show on the road? Okay, the 2024 NFL Draft is now underway. With the 11th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select. Welcome to the family, man. <laughs> Can't wait to get to work. Cannot wait. Heck yeah. Olu Fashanu. New York Jets. Yeah! When I got that call and I saw and I saw the New Jersey number, I was. I, I, I could not believe it. I was like, no way. Like, this is actually happening. Like, I'm I'm going to be a Jet. You know what time it is. J-E-T-S. With the 65th pick in the 2024 draft, the New York Jets select Malachi Corley, wide receiver out of Western Kentucky. Let's go, Jets. I got labeled the Yak King throughout the 2022 season. Uh, because I had 975 yards of and 40 broken tackles that season. Playing with Aaron Rodgers, I think that I'm his perfect weapon that he needs to uh, get this Jets team over the hump. I'm thrilled to announce that with the 134 pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Braylon Allen, running back, Wisconsin. Uh, running back with the defensive player's mindset. Um, I run the ball with that mentality of, of punishing and creating the contact. So definitely getting a physical, you know, downhill runner. With the 171st pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jordan Travis, quarterback, Florida State. This may be the steal of the draft. I'm just trying to pick their brain with everything they do. I mean, they're two of the best quarterbacks in the league, and I have an opportunity just to go in there and just learn from them, and I can't freaking wait. Joining me now, the newest New York Jet, Isaiah Davis. Isaiah, how excited are you to be a New York Jet? Like I said, dream come true, a blessing. Uh, never do I thought not be on the same team as you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, guys, but whatever my role is on the team, I'm going to go in and 
and upsell and you know, try a couple of the guys around me and learn from the guys who love me. Montez Stigger is the first CFL player drafted in NFL history. How does it feel? It just feels so good to get drafted. There's going to be a lot of interceptions, so, so Jets fans get ready. Thank God that I got drafted to the Jets. With the 257th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jalen Key, a defensive back from Alabama. Good luck, Mr. Rowland. For me, it was definitely pretty intense just kind of sit, sitting through all, all through the days and, and, and to be the last pick, but uh, Mr. Irrelevant, and you, you know, it's kind of nerve-wracking, but, but I like it. M Mr. Irrelevant, let's, let's go make something happen, man. Let's go, Jets! Woo! The Jets' first five draft picks were offensive players. Let's go into the film room and break some of these players down and see their skill sets. Let's take a look at Olu Fashionu right here at left tackle, number 74. This is a consistent set of his. I love it. Right here, the right hand punches. He hits that shoulder. He hits that spot like a bullseye in the target. And then the left hand is going to follow up right here. Now, once he gets his hands on you, that's his grip. He never lets that go. His hands are inside. He's tight right here. And then he drops his anchor to stop the charge right there. So the quarterback can make that throw. I love stopping it right here when Olu has his man locked out and the separation between the defensive player and the quarterback throwing the ball. Let's take a look at Malachi Corley and what he did. I mean, he had 29 touchdowns in his four years and 31 starts. But this is what he does. Like, short catch, long run. Defenders, he finds a way to make a miss or he runs right through them. And he finishes in the paint. Highly productive player at Western Kentucky. And then there's Jordan Travis. Like this throw is an NFL throw to Keon Coleman, the Bills' first round draft pick. It's a seam route against underneath coverage. And when you make this throw, it's, it's going to be a tight window. But he throws it on rhythm and timing and then accuracy. Puts the ball right where only Coleman can get it. That's a great throw by Jordan Travis. We saw a lot of those in his time at Florida State. Nice job in the film room, Baldy. Now, before we put you in the hot seat, let's take a look back at who you had the Jets selecting prior to the draft. You're up at number 10. You are selecting for Joe Douglas. Well, Adunze is gone in my mock, so he's already off the board. So I just went to Olu. Okay. I went to Olu Fashionu because, to me, I'm just taking the next best player available. Nice job on that. You want to take a ball? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I'm an offensive lineman. I think like an offensive lineman. We're only as good as the wall in front of you. All right. So let's put you on the hot seat right now. Which Jets draft pick has the highest floor? Well, I mean, look, Olu was picked, you know, with the 11th pick in this draft. Um, you pick that high. I mean, he's a clear-cut first-round pick. Like, whenever he gets on the field, under whatever circumstances, I expect that guy to step in and play at a high level on an offense that should be very good. Speaking of high level, how about the highest ceiling? You going Olu too? Well, I would say, I would say Olu for sure. But I kind of want to see, like, I think there's a real need for Malachi Corley mm -hmm. in this offense. There has been. They've drafted different players. They've tried a, different, a lot of different guys at that position over the last few years. But that's a key position in any offense. We got a guy that can work the middle of the field, that can run a lot of the underneath routes, and then to get you some juice after the catch. Like, I expect this Corley to be able to contribute this year. Finally, a word about Jets GM Joe Douglas. He's acknowledged this team has to win in 2024. Can you speak to the roster he's constructed to this point? Honestly, to, to Joe D, who I've known a long, long time now, there isn't one glaring hole in this roster right now. They filled all the needs. They finally have rebuilt this offensive line. They put a lot of resources into it, including this year's number one draft pick. Um, defensively, they've been stockpiling. Like he believes, and Robert Sala believes, that you win games in the trenches. And I would say that the Jets' trenches right now is as good as it's ever been under Joe Douglas. And I think this defensive line has a chance to be the best in all of football. So this, this is a very good roster right now. And it should win, but it has to win. And so it's all about going out there and getting it done now. Okay, that wraps up all our draft coverage from here at One Jets Drive. But we're not going to be gone too long because the NFL schedule is coming out. When it does, we'll be back right here. Yeah.